since day one of my campaign, I've talked about three priorities. And I feel like as a state, and especially with um, recent developments in the Attorney General's office, um, we haven't done a good job. And I think as Arizonans, we expect more out of our Attorney General. Um, I, I, at some point, I'd like to talk a little bit about my background. But let me just tell you that I've, I've spent most of my career working with law enforcement, keeping our community safe as federal prosecutors, a state prosecutor. Um, I was the director of the Arizona Department of Gaming, the law enforcement agency overseeing the casino gambling industry. And so I come at this from a perspective of someone that's worked very closely with law enforcement, as someone who grew up here in the Phoenix area, as a, a faithful husband with two daughters, and I want to leave, we have an obligation, I believe, to leave this a better place than we found it, to let our light shine into the world. And I also believed, ultimately, at the end of the day, we, um, you know, we are accountable for what we do with the least among us. And so the three priorities I've talked about since day one are one, we need to make sure we're doing everything we can to protect the most vulnerable in our society. And that it means either the, it's the unborn and the born. I am the only attorney general candidate that's been endorsed by Arizona Right to Life. And one of the things that's troubled me so much about the attorney general's office is what's going on with protecting vulnerable children and vulnerable adults. So when you look, and since day one I've talked about, even for the latest scandal, when it comes to child protective services, adult protective services, the attorney general is the state's lawyer. He or she represents all the state agencies. And so on day one, we need to figure out what kind of advice was being provided to state agencies where they thought it was okay to let thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of cases not be investigated. Who's told the state agencies that it was okay to shut off the helpline, the, the, the hotline when there's allegations of abuse, again, contrary to state law? What kind of advice are they providing to these state agencies where they're, they're not cooperating, there's not enough transparency um, in cooperating with the legislature, even the media? So I wanna make sure that agencies, state agencies that are charged with protecting the most vulnerable among us, child, children, vulnerable adults, that they are doing their job and that we are all working together to make sure those that can't protect themselves are being protected. So that's priority number one. Priority number two, as a former gang prosecutor, I understand the importance of having a, someone in the office that has prosecutorial knowledge and also knows how to deal and work with both federal, state, or not both, but work with federal, state, and local law enforcement. I've done that throughout my career. And as Attorney General, we need to focus on going after the cartels that are polluting our communities. Um, you know, a couple, about a month or so, two months ago, the head of the Sinaloa and drug cartel was arrested in northern Mexico, and I was doing an event that day. And I mentioned, I said, well, it's good news, but there's some bad news because nature abhors a vacuum. And what we've seen historically is the cartels will start fighting over turf and you're gonna start seeing an uptick in violence along the border that will spill over into places like Arizona because of um, our hub status when it comes to distribution of, of drugs throughout the United States. And so we need to be more aggressive in fighting the cartels because it's not only about polluting our neighborhoods with drugs, but it's also bringing people into this country illegally. Um, and so they are involved in all sorts of legal operations. And so I will work with the county attorneys. Um, and I don't know if you know, but Bill Montgomery, the current county attorney here in Maricopa County, he's endorsed me. I have a great relationship with prosecutors. I have a great relationship with, with federal authorities because I used to be a federal prosecutor and a state prosecutor. Bring those resources together to go after the cartels because they're not only smuggling drugs in this country, they're smuggling people into this country. And I will tell you, as a parent, there's a place called the Phoenix Dream Center. And unfortunately, we're seeing more and more shelters like this. And this is a place where victims of sexual trafficking um, can have a safe place. And you see these young women that are 15, 16 years old that have been brought into this country illegally and sold into sexual slavery, it will absolutely break your heart. And you say, how can we tolerate this in our community? How can we allow this to happen? And the time for talking is over. And I will tell you, for example, my Republican primary opponent will tell you, oh, I'm on this task force or I've been this. It, but it's not enough to have titles. It's not enough to have words. It's about actions. We get judged ultimately on our actions. And so I want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to go after the cartels that are bringing in drugs and people into this country. And the third thing, you know, the Attorney General, I like to say, um, wields the shield, or excuse me, the, the sword of justice. You know, he or she is the state's chief law enforcement officer. They have the ability to take away your livelihood, your life, your liberty, your property. I learned my first day on the job as a prosecutor that you will always be held to a higher standard because you hold that sword, because you can affect people's livelihoods. And it's a solemn obligation. I accept, I'm willing to accept that responsibility of being held to a higher standard. 
But I always like to picture, um, you know, Lady Justice is holding a, a shield as well. And I call that the shield of sovereignty. And one of the things that um, I think we need to do a better job of is pushing back against the overreach of the federal government. And I, I will give you a few examples. Congressman Trent Franks, who's endorsed me, um, introduced me to an event recently. And Congressman Franks talked about the fact that, you know, we're like a ship going over the waterfalls, and we've got to turn this thing around. And there has been this radical shift in power from the states to Washington. It's not the way the framers are envisioned it. And Arizona shouldn't be dependent on Washington um, when it comes to funding all these various programs and frankly telling us how we should um, operate our medical system. And that's what's happening. And so there are other attorney generals in other states that I think are doing a really good job of pushing back on a consistent basis against the federal overreach, but I don't think our attorney general has. And so there have been instances where, for example, the independent payment advisory board litigation that's going on right now in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals regarding these death panels, those panels that are being implemented as a result of the Obama administration, our, our attorney general's MIA on that. I think we need to be more involved. I think that there are issues with um, you know, the lost other litigation involving um, the uh, Obama administration's war on coal and the effect that has on our economy and our jobs. So in the Obama administration, they're, they're promulgating new rules dealing, for example, with new um, carbon dioxide emissions, you know, lower, try to lower them to 1,100 uh, uh, pounds per megawatt hour generated. Technology doesn't exist to do that. And you see what's happening in northern Arizona with trying to shut down the hat, one of the Navajo, excuse me, trying to shut down Navajo generating station. And that's going to have a devastating impact on our economy. It's going to result in higher utility rates. It's going to result in the loss of thousands of jobs up there in uh, northern Arizona. Tribal communities like the Hopi rely so much on revenue from the mining and the, the coal and, and the operation of the energy, energy generation. And so we need to be fully engaged in pushing back against the Obama administration and some of those um, things that they're doing, whether it's the war on coal, whether it's radical environmental regulations, or whether it's an attempt to implement um, you know, a federal health care system that frankly is going to lead to less choices and less care. And so I want to be there to fight that fight. And Unfortunately, we haven't always been there as a state. And there are instances where, um, for example, my primary opponent, Tom Horn, has joined with Eric Holder in trying to stop the merger between US Air and American Airlines, where he's just last month, he signed a letter, or March, he signed a letter with mostly Democratic attorney generals telling Walmart and CVS Pharmacy, you know, they shouldn't be selling tobacco products. Now, regardless of what you feel about tobacco, I mean, cancer is caused by smoking, tobacco is terrible. But it's still a lawful product. And I don't think the state attorney general should be telling businesses how they should or shouldn't be operating. Um, I don't think that's the job of the attorney general. The attorney general has to enforce the rule of law, make sure that the rules are enforced uniformly, not in an arbitrary manner. Everyone knows what the rules are going into the, the game, so to speak. And that's your job. And if people don't like the rules, then you change your legislator, you change your congressperson, you change your governor. Maybe you do an initiative, but you don't get to pick and choose which rules you want to follow or not. And it's bad enough, I believe, when the legislature tries to pick winners and losers in the marketplace. It's even worse when a lawyer does it. And so I want to make sure that we get back um, that third priority of making sure that we're pushing back against the overreach of the federal government and really getting back to our priorities as, as, a, as an attorney general to help the state move forward in creating those economic conditions where folks know that if they're doing an honest job and honest work, that they will receive the benefits of the fruits of their labor.